Hello and a very, very warm welcome to this session which forms part of the International Festival of Learning. My name is Marcelo Starikov and I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted and feel very honoured to be leading a session for such a wonderful festival. Now this session is focuses on a project that we've just um, finished in collaboration with the Michael Aldrich Foundation called the Image of the Week project. And the idea of the project, as you'll see, is that the children in schools, but then it also expanded to residency in, in care homes and um, residents associated with, with Age UK um, are presented with an image, a work of art every week, and then they get the opportunity to, to think through it uh, during the week in terms of develop, um, thinking through the arts using uh, creative thinking and critical thinking. And so what, what uh, Philippa Aldrich and I wanted to share with yourselves was the, the background to how the project came to be, and then to also share with, with yourselves the type of um, artworks that we shared in, in this pilot study that's just finished with, with the children and uh, care home residents and then it'll give you an idea of the amazing impact that this, this type of project has had by showing you um, and sharing with you actual comments and feedback from the children themselves, from the, uh, from the teachers, from the artists and, and from the uh, care home residents themselves. And also to um, try and see if, as you'll see at the end, if having had the opportunity to conduct this uh, pilot project, which has been so, so successful, there's an opportunity with yourselves to collaborate in terms of uh, phase two of the project. So let me start by sharing the presentation with yourselves that we've created to show you how the project originated and the types of artworks that we used and the, the impact that the, the project had. So the Michael Aldrich Foundation and the Joe of Not Knowing collaboration project became known as the Image of the Week project. And um, just to put things in a little bit of context, the Michael Aldrich Foundation is, is a Brighton-based charity, our charity linked to the University of, of, of Brighton and Philippa Aldrich is the chair. The collection holds um, a huge number of amazing works of art and um, Philippa was really, really keen for that collection to be enjoyed by the general public. And uh, the joy of not knowing is a terminology that has now become given to the philosophy of education and of school leadership that, that I developed and created during my time as a primary teacher and head teacher. So in terms of the uh, coming together of the two organisations and developing uh, the project, we, we based the, the partnership and, and the project on a concept that formed uh, one of the main principles and basis of the joy of not knowing or junk approaches as it's known whilst it was being developed um, and one of the approaches uh, that the, the the junk approach encourages children to engage in is uh, a critical is trying to ensure that the, the children have the opportunity to develop their creative and critical thinking skills as a normal part of the teaching and learning process as a normal part of the school day. So although there are hundreds of initiatives that make up the, uh, the junk approach, one of the really, really exciting ones is one that's called uh, Image of the Week. And the idea is that every, or it used, when I was a head teacher, this is from uh, Hartford Infants and Nursery School, uh, an example of so every Monday morning at whole school assembly with three to uh, seven year olds in the hall, um, we would present them every Monday morning with a work of art. It could be anything at all. It could be um, painting, a picture, uh, a sculpture, a poem. And uh, the idea was that during assembly they had a, a time to discuss it all, and then during the week 
they had a chance to comment and discuss and think about the, the work of art from a, a creative thinking point of view. We also had, as you can see here, a, a display uh, in the corridor with post-it notes. So at all times, uh, the children and the adults could leave a, a, a note, a message of, of what they thought uh, of the work of art. And just before we start to explain the actual project that we've just done, I just wanted to show you this, this particular image here, because this shows that the, the power that such a simple to introduce concept as part of the of the philosophy of education of a school can have such an impact on children's um, self-esteem and motivation. At the time that this image of the week activity came about in the school, we were celebrating as a head teacher's challenge the number of hundreds. So that it was a hundredth day of the academic year and the children were challenged to uh, celebrate the number 100 in any way at all. Uh, so this child went with his mom to the, to the beach in, in Brighton and collected 100 things uh, that they found uh, on the beach and then created this most incredible collage and brought it in as part of uh, the submission for the Head Teachers Challenge. As soon as that came in, and because we had the, the routine of the image of the week, we, we immediately said that must become the image of the week for the next week for the whole school. And I can't tell you the impact that that had on that child's self-esteem, on the aspirations of all other children in terms of what children can achieve themselves and how much children can influence the life of a school and the enjoyment of learning in a school and their, their, their participation in how the, the school day runs. So it was a child-led, the, the image of the week concept led to a child-led initiative which then um, led to some amazing work uh, with, uh, with the children. And also then his mum, who's an artist, came in um, and they talked about it. So the, the repercussions were absolutely um, enormous in terms of what the image of the week provided for, for the children. So the idea with uh, collaborating with the Michael Aldridge Foundation was that each, image, each week, the image of the week would be uh, provided to the schools from either the, the collection, one of the artworks from the collection, uh, of the Michael Lawrence uh, Foundation or a work of art from one of the artists that the Michael Aldrich Foundation uh, supports. The Michael Aldrich Foundation um, is fantastic at supporting uh, young and up and coming artists and uh, opening up a really exciting future for them. Uh, providing the schools with an image to discuss every week was really fantastic. But then the really lovely idea of the project is that at the end of the project, uh, the plan is to then take to the school all the works of art uh, that the children have been considering, creating a big gallery in the school, curating it with the children's comments and inviting all the families in to, to walk around um, as a gallery and for the children to actually see. And we've done this before once uh, in, in the school. We bring in real works of art with with Philippa into the school was, was a tremendous experience for the children actually seeing the works of art uh, in their school. So it gave us the idea of, of taking this out more broadly on a national perspective and giving the, the, the schools the opportunity to, to engage in a very exciting project that brings art, the, the arts to, in, to the forefront of the, of the focus of the school and of the way that children are able to promote a love of thinking and creative thinking and philosophical thinking in with children. So what we did is that we invited a number of schools in Norfolk and Suffolk, but also some in West Sussex joined in. And also then uh, very unexpectedly, but incredibly wonderfully uh, through Philippa's connections, we also started to widen the project to care homes during the last three months and people who are associated with with age uk in uh, east and west sussex so um it was the the um so i just want to show you some of the examples of the of the artwork and the responses that were received from the various people who who took part 
Um, so this was um, a really lovely uh, painting that uh, that we provided for the children. I think this was the first one that that uh, that we offered. Uh, Patrick Burke's five figures uh, on a red uh, background. As you can see here, um, children of all ages, and you'll then see adults uh, as well of all ages. So it really is a, a, a naught to ninety nine um, project that uh, that um, uh, that formed this this pilot project. Um, so one of my reception children thought that the characters were queuing for a show because they all dressed uh, smartly. Uh, year ones, um, this is the, the this is the lovely thing that the project had. It, it made children connect uh, knowledge uh, that they had. Some you know that connection of knowledge and experiences from their real lives was, was so enlightening with this project. As it says here, what well, year ones found that the Hubble Space Telescope was launched the same year that Patrick Bay painted this. You know, how amazing is that? That uh, a year one child has got a sense of what was happening in the world at the same time as the um, as the painting was being painted. Um, and um, that, you know, that meant that they had to do a lot of research and, um, and uh, you know, really find a lot of interest and, and take a, uh, and develop a, a real deep knowledge of of the world um, uh, of the, the history of the history of the world. Um, it also made the children um, wonder so much. One of my year one children wondered why the men have brown eyes and the ladies have blue eyes, which is an incredible observation. You know, kind of this level and depth of observation just by giving the giving the children the opportunity to to think openly creatively uh, without worrying um, enjoyably all those sorts of things is, is absolutely fantastic uh, year five children said when I look at this picture I see a family that looks like they're from the 1930s again really using that kind of um, knowledge that, that they may have um, and bringing in connecting all sorts of things from from their lives um, when I looked at the photo, they looked suspicious because of their suits and it looked really old fashioned. Um, this, what we found is that in children trying to describe the images and what they saw, um, they also started to develop a, a great ability in, in writing creatively. So it had a huge impact on, uh, on their creative writing imagination and so on. Um, and I really like this one. So I think their family and members had just got out of an argument um, and they don't want uh, to talk or even look at each other. Such genius thinking, so, so creative. Um, the, the, these, these thoughts also have emerged because the project was designed by, um, with Philip and I providing not just the the work of art, but also a little bit of background about the artist and um, and the work of art itself, and also a set of questions, a set of prompt questions that uh, the teachers then chose from. There's a list of about twenty questions that and the, the teachers. Um, chose uh, the most appropriate set to provide for, for their age group, and that kind of prompted um, children's um, thinking along the way. Um, and this is you know, really amazing. I just want to show you the range of um, artworks that we introduce uh, the, the children to. This is uh, Tom Mead, an amazing designer who uses recycled plastic to make uh, objects. And this speaker is, is so beautiful. And look at that quote from that child. It says, it looks like my imagination when I'm happy. You know, it's just, just bringing those thoughts um, alive um, as part of um, education of part of school is just just tremendous. The other thing that the project was made a huge value on was that the inter they had a, a, a very big sense of interaction between um, the children, the teachers, and uh, Philippa and I and the artists. So it connected the children um, to uh, a lot of other uh, people, the the artists themselves, and, and to us by. Um, uh, giving us feedback along the way, posting that feedback on um, on a private uh, Facebook group and giving Philip and I the chance to respond to those children. And our responses to those children, once they made a comment, uh, had such a huge impact. Uh, like I know it says, it says, I know this will be over the moon when he reads your comments. Um, I've been so impressed with the children. I can't wait to see what their take is uh, on this, this speaker. 
Um, and what we did is, as well, is we, we used uh, a lot of the um, works of art to create kind of themes around the project. So this was just one of three um, um, works of art that we did in consecutive weeks that touched upon the theme of um, environmentally friendly thoughts, values, uh, sustainability, um, world um, uh, um, um, prevention of um, endangered um, preventing the, the disappearance of endangered species and, and, and so on. So uh, it created um, a li little, it gave us the opportunity to create little themes um, for the children um, as well. Um, and the other thing that, that we did is that it, within those questions, we made them very, very broad. So for example, with, with this one, the children were tasked to, uh, to think of how many uh, holes they could see. So. A lot of the questions uh, involve them uh, using their mathematical knowledge, um, their scientific knowledge, um, and even a lot of uh, philosophical uh, questioning um, and uh, considering um, the, the, the works of art from, from a philosophical perspective. So it, was, it just covered so much. Um, and I just want to share with you as well, but one, one of the most unexpected and most wonderful things of the project was the impact that it had on the artists themselves and the perspective that the artists gave us at the end of the project, having contributed their artwork and having heard and listened and read the, the comments from um, either the adults or the children um, was, was really, really tremendous. Uh, for example, Tom, who created this, um, this speaker says, um, your project allows children to see work that's maybe not that's, that's maybe more current and relevant to our current social environmental climate than uh, they would otherwise see. And from the reaction from the children who took part, you can really see that they thought hard about what messages the arts and designers were trying to convey through their work. That is a, it's amazing for children to actually have that empathy, that view, that kind of feel of what is the artist trying to convey. Uh, because of the questions that we asked and the, the way that the art was presented is, is, is so fascinating. So it's not just about just reacting to the, the artwork, but it's also getting the children to think, you know, what is the artist actually trying to uh, convey? So that critical thinking is such an amazing lifelong um, skill, disposition, qualities that, that to give children from a very early age and to have for, for life. Um, it also means new exposure to artists and designers uh, to a whole new audience. So from an artist's point of view, they felt that they were reaching out a whole new uh, audience that they would not otherwise reach. Um, as St. Tom says, a super successful project, and I can't wait to see how it develops in the coming years. And that's you, one of the reasons for hosting the session today for the festival is to see if um, some ideas can come out and we can collaborate with yourselves in terms of uh, how the project moves on in, in the coming years. And this is just the, the, one of the most, most special things, so unexpectedly amazing. These are two uh, six-year-old children who, one of them, uh, he was so inspired by the, by the project and it led to one of them setting up this is a, um, one of the artworks, which is a, a work in ceramics. And you can see her there, she set it up and she's actually the teacher and she's got the classroom set up with her dolls here. And she's actually leading, being the teacher of the image of the week project to her dolls. And her mom was saying that it was just incredible seeing her in action. Who would have imagined they would have inspired a, a six-year-old child at home to, to do this? And equally, this one is just incredible. Um, this is one of the artworks that was very, very popular, um, a, a seascape scene. And this is uh, the child not just um, interpreting uh, it uh, verbally and through her thoughts and through thinking, but also being inspired to have a go herself at creating her own interpretation of the actual work of art. And not only did she create one um, for her teacher, but then, incredibly, in the post, Philippa and I received one of these. So she made one for us as well. 
to create uh, her own artwork. And, and in other photographs that they sent us, you can see that she set up her own little studio at home and she's got all her paintings and all her, there's everything on the table all set up, which is just absolutely tremendous. Steve Gallagher, who was the photographer who uh, created this seascape, it says something that's so touching and so, so wonderful from uh, his point of view. It says, my entire life has always in some way had an association with the arts. And I think how wonderful, if he said himself, how wonderful it would have been for him to have had a program such as the image of the week in place when he was growing up. So the, see, as an artist, seeing the importance of this project uh, as for, for the children now and wishing it had it's been an extra bonus. I wish the program of success and hope it touches people's lives in the same way art has done throughout my time. So those words from an actual artist are so, so, so wonderful. And like we say with Philippa, I'm sure that through this we are creating, nurturing um, hundreds, if not thousands of artists um, of the future. And then this is another wonderful example. This is Jack uh, Darling's Black Rhino, which again was part of the environmental little theme that, that we had. And this is such a thought provoking um, piece of art, which is was, was so, so, so well received by, by the children. And also um, it made the, the children and it, it had the impact of getting uh, children who would not normally contribute uh, to contribute as, as it, uh, this teacher says, is I love the fact that children who find academic and other things challenging were able to feel successful through the Image of the Week project. So important that, that and that's what the whole of the Junk approach is based is, is in enabling children to feel successful at all times, equipping them with all they need and all the excitement and enthusiasm to, to feel that they are successful as individuals and as learners. The uh, children were definitely motivated to, to think creatively and, and the year one child said that the rhino may think of something mean as it doesn't look happy. Uh, Fred thinks his tusks are gold because the others got broken. So someone made him new ones like the rhino in the Ipswich Museum. Again, you know, linking such a young child, linking a work of art to an experience that he's had with his family uh, going to a museum, linking those two things together. And uh, he then goes to say that endangered species um, is an animal that has got not, um, there aren't many left of them and they might get extinct like the dinosaurs. So the whole concept of, um, of endangered species came alive through uh, John Darling's wonderful rhino. And then he, he Jack himself, um, contributes some wonderful, wonderful comments. He says, I've collaborated with the Michael Irish Foundation on various and very well projects and, and exploring new methods of working couldn't be more significant, uh, particularly now. I've always had a passion for animal conservation and hearing of people's interpretation of my work or has been very valuable and interesting. I always think of arts having the ability to provoke unique and individual experiences, almost an ace, ace. no two people interpret a piece of work in the same way. Amazing, Jack. He, you know, what he says is what the project does. It, and it's the idea that you present it, um, uh, through a work of art to presenting a work of art to children enables them to all feel free to express how they feel. There's no right or wrong answer. It's their interpretation and it's all, they're all equally valid. I'm a strong believer in the arts, um, in the importance to people's mental well-being, but also for the transferable skills they can offer individuals later on in their lives. So that's all we were saying earlier, is developing through this project, children are developing those skills that will serve them for the rest of their lives. So it's a li lifelong learning skills. I'm pleased to learn of the success of this project and look forward to its development. Having people to learn from, but also aspire to help me. And I hope I've been able to give back in the same way. And Jack absolutely has. He's been able to give um, so much. Um, and this is wonderful as well. Uh, the artists themselves uh, started to create uh, little videos for the children so that the children could actually see how the artist was creating the work of art that they were considering. And uh, Elena, who uh, creates uh, shrink pots, which is really fascinating, she says that the project has drawn focus and attention to areas of art that I didn't experience in school, connections between the art, the artists and the students themselves. 
Um, so in Eleanor's case, it's, it was so valuable because the children sent uh, Eleanor uh, loads of questions and then uh, Eleanor recorded the answer to those questions they're speaking directly to the children on the video. Um, they asked detailed interesting questions about, that made myself think creatively about my own work and also have some fun with it. So children promoting creative thinking in artists as well as artists promoting creative thinking in students. This project came at a difficult time and uh, Image of the Week created a real sense of community and togetherness. And then I also wanted to share with you the, let me just, the, the, the quotes from Thomas Sissons who contributed to the most amazing poem on sustainability as, as well to, towards the, the artwork. And, and Tommy says, and the image of the project has proven to be both enriching and inclusive for learners of all ages. And that was the, the real value and expected value that we found through including residents in care homes and, and HUK as well. Having a persistent passion uh, in widening education participation myself, I was honoured to have my environmentally friendly conscious poetry shared with both school pupils and care home residents. It's crucial to ensure that learners of all ages are introduced to new ways in which they can creatively communicate and express themselves and their experiences. Image of the Week project has effectively presented those opportunities and created a space in which the critical and imaginative thought of students is celebrated. Exactly, Tommy, is the celebration of that creative thinking. And what Tommy says that, that it's enriched the experience of learners of all ages is, is so true that the teachers were fascinated by it all. Philippa and I learned an enormous amount. I, you know, I had no idea what shrink pots were, how they were made. Every time we offered the, the schools the care homes that work of art, we did a huge amount of research and learned an enormous amount uh, from, from each work of art ourselves. So was, and this is just to show you, look how wonderful this, this is. These are uh, care home residents and age UK uh, residents who are responding to the questions, as you can see here. Also, and by reminiscing and, re and re remembering so many of the, the um, of their experiences when, when they were young. But also look at this incredible ability. These are residents just drawing the, their own interpretations of, of the artwork. It, we just could not believe the amount of um, talent, artistic talent and dedication and effort that, that they found and purpose in, in wanting to, to engage. And the conversations that, 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 that emerged uh, amongst the residents and, and the adults was just, just really, really, truly uh, incredible. So just as, as a summary of the project, what we wanted to just highlight that it, it was a, it was very powerful to use the project in the formats uh, that we did. Unfortunately, we weren't able to conclude it because it, be, it became an online project rather than a, a physical project of, uh, at, at the end of which, so we couldn't take the, the actual works of art uh, to the schools because of the, of the restrictions that, um, that we're living in. But nonetheless, it, it was very, very powerful to use the images as an online version and to accompany those. We felt it pati worked particularly well when they were accompanied by really well thought out and formulated prompts of, of, of questions that touched upon many areas of, of art, but also inspired the, the, the people considering the artwork to think very broadly through, through other subjects as well. The flexibility of the format was great. Um, we had to you know, turn it from, from a physical project to an online project. And then it just meant that people could, a lot more people could have access to it. And they contributed to, to Facebook or Twitter, online, offline, um, and adapted it to a very different settings. So the age range really was from five to 100. And also the project was meaningful for different people in different ways, uh, as can be seen from the feedback that, uh, that we received and that we shared. This education is broader sense across generations and settings, and even for us, um, we learned an enormous number of things as well. Um, and we could see the confidence building in the participants as the project moved forward, and it helped to build connections at a time where people were feeling 
cut off and isolated. So that social, it did, it had a social impact as well as a cultural impact, which we were absolutely delighted with. And very importantly now is the last bullet point. We're really keen to offer the project out to more schools and other institutions, especially where our funding is under threat. And we would like to work with our artists and makers to support their development and practice and widen their audience as well. So this is a very, very open invitation to yourselves. You can contact uh, Philippa and I in, in all these ways. If you're interested at all, we're preparing to launch the next stage of, of the project. If you're interested at all in forming part of it or have some suggestions uh, with the Image of the Week project and its future, please uh, let us know. So um, I hope that, uh, that you've really uh, enjoyed the session. I hope that you've really enjoyed uh, hearing about uh, this very exciting uh, project. And um, I really hope that um, we could make this uh, the beginning of some very exciting new collaborations.